Fine girl, no pimple. See, I love your swag and I love your dimple. Simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still the bad guy. Uh. <laughs> yes, up, people. What's going on, man? It is your boy, Whiskey from Nigeria. And you guys are watching Factory78.com. Keep watching because Weezy say so. If you don't, then you're dulling. So don't do. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, before I answer the question, can I take this call? Because yeah. I'm just my mom. This is freestyle. All right, this is another freestyle right here. Factory78.com. I love your swag and I love your Factory78.com. This is F7A TV. Are they sure your host? Exclusive interviews. It doesn't get better than this. Wizkid, aka Ayobalogun, aka Wheezy Frenzy. How you doing, my brother? How you doing? I'm chilling, bro. I'm doing good, man. Well, for a lot of people in the UK, YouTube started it off. I'm just going to go. First of all, I'll talk about myself. Someone placed a song on my page about a year ago now. Holla at your boy. And not only did he just put the song there, he basically said to me, bro, you need to listen to this song. Who is this kid? Who is this guy? He said it's Wiz Kid from Nigeria. First of all, Wiz Kid, tell me how it all started for you. The music game, how did you get into it? You're still a young guy. Nigerian, you know, the music, the music industry in Nigeria, Africa especially, hasn't really allowed you know, young guys yeah, to break into the game. So tell me a little bit about yourself, how you got into the game and how you got here. Well, um, it all started for me like when I was 11 years old, you know. It started in church for me, you know. I've, my, I've always been a church boy. Like I go to church like every Sunday, weekdays, you know. <laughs> bad guy. <laughs> yeah, bad guy still. <laughs> so then, you know, I just didn't like the choir. I never wanted to be a part of the choir because number one, my voice was too loud. So like I had issues, like I, I, whenever I sing, I sing with an eye pitch. So like it, it was too loud. And then I liked rap. So I just didn't want to do the old church thing. I like, sing like regular choir guy and everything. So I just called like a couple of my friends then in church, like three of us. So you guys should come together, man. Let's, 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 let's like come together and form a group called Glorious Five. That was like a long time ago, you know? <laughs> so we started it then, we dropped an album in church dropped an album in church then you know that was when i made my first thousands i made like ten thousand there off that thing and you know that was big money for me big money uh, you know <laughs> so um after that i met ojb you know when i met ojb he allowed me to come to the studio more often like i used to just go stick around i was just that kid around i watched two-faced record grass to grace wow. i watched sounds of time record his album then jack bajantes i watched a lot of them record like most of their biggest hits. So, you know, I was just always in the studio, you know, anytime someone is singing, I'd be like, yeah, I can't do this better. And I talked to GB, like, let me do it. So he just chill. You know, like for a year, I was always going to the studio and I never recorded one song. Wow. You know, then, then after that time, he, then he gave me an opportunity to record one song. Then he gave me, the reason why he didn't allow me to record, he said, in order to make me be better. Cause you know, when you have that hunger to record, yeah. you just keep getting better. You go like, ah, why doesn't this guy want me to record? You know, you just, keep having stuff in your head that's why i'm actually kind of good with freestyles now because all the stuff i used to write i had them in my head like every stuff like i had like a very big book when i used to write my songs and i had everything in my head so it was it was really crazy then then when i got to record my first song i recorded in school area you know i dropped it in the hood and everybody would just pop it to like ah, who's this guy you know but then it was because if you're not old enough and you know you can't talk respect. for yourself you know they wouldn't respect you the respect alone you know so uh, nobody respected me then you know and i was young and most of my friends were older than i was so like all my friends were older than i was so it was hard for me breaking into the industry you know i met nato c when i was 15 wow. and then i used to write i used to like oh, nato listen to this and he listens to it and say yo change this change this you'll be more real be sound more you know so i was just i was just around i was i've always been around music music has always been my thing i've always been doing it i've always been doing it then um, later on, I met um, my manager, Osagi, like a couple of years ago, like like four or five years, five years ago, actually. Wow. Yeah, I met her five years ago. Then we just started working since then. Then, you know, after that, 
stuff just started happening, you know. Mi then Mi came to Lagos, you know. We just came then and we just met and we just became friends. And after that time, my manager had an accident, you know. So I was I was really bad. I felt really bad, you know. I was down and she was the only thing I had then. So I was scared, like, oh, if anything, <laughs> what's gonna happen, babe? You know, like there's nothing I can do with my music. Then one Sunday, I just went to Mi's house and I went to drop off something for him and he was like, yo, Weezy, man, I have this beat, listen to it. And he just played me the beat and I was like, I listened to like 10 seconds and I was like, yo, give me the mic. I just did it and I just did a freestyle and I just left. And before I knew it, it dropped the album and everybody was like, yo, they like this song, they like this song. If you don't talk money, I'm all on show. Like, but I forgot. I did that thing in like two seconds. Why <laughs> you guys, you know, I didn't know it was going to be that big. Then in school, people started knowing who Whiskey was. And, you know, attention just started coming to oh, me and yeah, stuff. So. I started doing my thing, man. Thing is, I never stop recording. I never stop working because I never get comfortable. Wow. Now, the thing about you working freestyles and stuff, holla at your boy. I saw the, that, like I said, I saw the song on YouTube. It only had your picture on it. And all of a sudden, the views started to fly. Facebook went crazy. UK, everywhere went crazy. Everybody was like, who's this young kid? It sounded a little bit American. sounded a little... And someone said, it's Nigerian, it's African. We were proud. I'm still proud right here. Mm -hmm. Now, the other one, Tease Me. Tease Me came after that. When I listened to that song, the fact that you were talking about freestyling and stuff yeah. right now just made me think back as well. Be honest, bro. Was that a freestyle? In that song? Trust me, it was, man. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't lie about me doing the song that is a freestyle. You know, like, people being... Every every time I'm in the studio, like, I have loads of friends with me. Like, when I, even when I did Dondo, like, I just had my friends. And my friends was just, you know, like, chilling with my guy. Pa no, ni. It was not like, you know, it, I can't write that. Trust me, I can't. If I sit down to write a song, it's definitely going to be better than tease me. Mm. So, you know, so it was just a first time. I just did it that day because I was, I felt really bad. You know, my pops, my pops were just raking for me that day. Like, yo, you need to stay in school. You need to like, Real? I'm in school still, but just still do music. <laughs> I don't want you to go. You just a bad guy, man. You roll with bad friends. So when I was freestyling, just said, "Nah, me be bad guys." Mm. That's like guys. That's special type of fine guys. Do you get? And I have bad guys. So, you know, people just thought I was saying uh, I'd be really bad. I'm not a bad guy, really, you know, but I'm a bad guy still. Well, but bad, A very good well, bad guy. Very good bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, the fact that you, you're talking about you being in school, your parents and, and all that, coming from the culture that we come from, mm -hmm. entertainment is still frowned upon when it comes to our folks. You know, they want you to go to school, make sure you get your grades done. But for you to be this young and be doing it this big, what has the challenges been or what have you gone through with your parents with regards to the entertainment industry? Tell me about the challenges with your parents. Okay, like when I started, yeah, of course my father didn't want me to do this. It was like against it, you know, because I'm the only boy and the last child. Mm. So it was crazy for him to be like, ah, my only son, musician, as in how, why? Kilo <laughs> you understand? Oh, Nike. As in, you know. <laughs> So it was hard, man. So I had to do a lot to convince him. You know, I had to, I had to work so hard. Like I was always in the studio. I was a studio rat. Like I was always in the studio, and I was always listening to different stuff to better my music. You know, so after that time, you know, my father just started because well, I was not doing bad in school either. So he had, he had nothing to hold against me. Like every time I'm on holidays, I'm always in the studio, and he go like, oh, well, you did well in the school, so just that's what you want to do. Then cool. So just started allowing me to do it. Then you know, I started making small change, small change. And I was like 19, I got my first car, and I was like, wow, you know, wow, <laughs> like really. <laughs> So since then, I've just been doing like doing stuff, you know. My pops is really proud of me right now. My mom has always been there. She's always you know, been there. Being proud of you, the whole community, the whole, Af you know, Africa is proud of you right now. I saw your profile on MTV, and that says a lot. You know, it said exactly how you came into the game and what you've been doing since then. Now, talking about the music, I want to talk about the video. Tease me. The concept of that video was basically you becoming a big man and the big boys, Banky W speaking, <laughs> took you to where the big boys play. When you first got there and Kemi Aditiba said this was going to be the script, the girls were here, everything's all done. How did you feel? I was like, wow. Like, are you sure, like, everybody's ready to see that now? You know, I, I, was, I wasn't sure what my fans would, like, because, like, in Nigeria, 
every little kid like the anthem is holla at your boy like you can if you see like a two-year-old she can sing holla at your boy like i have cousins i have little nephews so like every little kid in lagos actually loves holla at your boy so like i was saying that like this these kids actually look up to me you know they would definitely want to do what i do they want to do what i do so um i just thought about it again like are you guys really sure about this and banky was like let's just give it a shot if you don't like it we won't put it out i was like okay no problems then we shot the video we traveled we went to abuja we came back to lagos we shot the cameo scene you know and the funniest thing is no video in nigeria can pull that amount of stars out trust me like i had every of my bad guy i've only had special appearances from nato c you know everybody everybody, was everybody was in there one the cold seed prince everybody i mentioned ice prince jesse jacks you know mi you know Trust me, man. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. It was. It was not even hard, you know, because because of because of the relationship I've had with most of these guys in the industry, and you know, because I've always learned to be myself, mm. and I think they've learned to actually appreciate the fact that oh, there's a young kid doing it, so they have given me all their support, and I thank everybody for that, you know. So whenever I say yo, let's do this, I want to do this, please, you guys come and show me support. I don't have to call you one million times. Everybody goes okay, well, right, definitely I'll be there, man. They call me that day, say yo, Wizzy, I used to show today, oh, we are coming, you understand? So I love the fact that they look out for me like that little brother you know everybody in the industry looks out for me man and i'm happy about yeah, that, happy man. About that. Yeah, now yeah, bro the album you've dropped three singles already the heat on youtube is ridiculous it's yeah. absolutely ridiculous like i said yeah. i said wheezy frenzy i want that to catch fire <laughs> twitter hashtag wheezy frenzy <laughs> wheez kid that's what i'm talking about like biba fever has completely lit up the world now for africa to produce someone like you young fresh you're real. You talk about the music, that things that affect you, mm -hmm. education, your relationship, your fans, your girls, everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, to see that happening, this album, when exactly are we supposed to be expecting it? Because as someone said February, someone said March. Yeah. What is the deal with this album? Uh, actually, the album was supposed to drop on Valentine's Day, but due to like loads of preparations for this show in the UK, you know, I couldn't finish up work with the album, but trust me, man, I record every day. Right now, I have like close to 22 songs. Oh my gosh. You know, I have like 22 songs right now, and without featuring anybody, like I've not featured anybody, but I'm gonna, when I get back to Nigeria, I'm definitely gonna feature my guys, and I'll have an international, I bless it as well. So, in a couple of weeks, the album is definitely gonna be ready, and it's gonna drop in March, mm -hmm. hopefully. So, y'all watch out. Immediately I get the date, you'll be the first to know. You Tell us. You first. You Trust heard me. that, Factory78.com. Tell us what the album is gonna be called, bro. Well, I actually don't have a name for the album yet, you know, because the album is like me. It's, I'm putting everything into this. I'm putting, I'm putting everything like this is everything i've always dreamed of you know like um, i've always wanted to be big i've always wanted to do this big really young you know so this is everything i've always dreamt of so now i just want to put work into the album, into the album do you understand so i'm putting so much work into the album once i'm done we're gonna feel it trust me man the album is heavy we can't heavy. wait for that and i know finally before i let you go i know you gotta run now the relationship you've had with your label mates, especially Banky W, mm -hmm. you know, Banky came over, he spoke about you, and you can see in his eyes, Definitely. you know, the kind of respect he has for you. Mm -hmm. Now, how, you know, how do you feel, how lucky do you feel working with people like Banky W and the other guys that you mentioned in the game? The thing is, you know, when I met Banky, Banky is like the first person that has that has ever spoken to me, like that has ever believed in me like that. That the first day he met me, the way he was talking about me, I was shocked. I was like. Nobody has ever spoken to me about me, myself, like this. Do you understand? So it was different for me. I was like, wow. As in, and he just wanted to be, like, before we even started working, we were friends, you know. Like, I used to just go to his studio after that time. We recorded Oh My Girl, You Too Much. Mm. I co-wrote a couple of the songs on his album, you know. Um, no Be Lie, I co-wrote that one f with him. And I did a couple of stuff for him on the album. And we were just friends, you know. And it was it was just there for me like a big brother. Like I was in school when I had issues in school. Like you know some lecturers were just like, yo, you don't come to school on a regular. You know it was just always there for me. Up. It turned up and it was like, yo, okay, I'm gonna get him to school Monday to um, Thursday. You know, and we're gonna do music after that. Like, cool, no problem. So it was always there for me. You know, so and I really appreciate that. And um, Banky is like a big brother, man. He's like a big brother figure. Imagine you're working with your family. You wouldn't have much problems. Mm. You know, when you guys understand each other already. Like we've never had issues with. I mean, not like he has never actually raised his voice at me. 
wow. and he has raised his voice and my manager everybody that works with us you understand and every time when he just comes to me he has never raised his voice at me because i've never done anything wrong because wow. I, I understand him already i know oh he doesn't like this yo yo we're not supposed to do this yo okay this is what he would definitely want to hear he loves it when i bring about new material like banky is like when i'm going into the studio he's very excited because he knows Wow, whiskey is coming come up. with something heavy and he just believes in me like don't even say just play just say whiskey went to the studio yesterday that's another he he knows it already he doesn't you don't have to and you know so it's like he believes so much in me like so and I, i'm really happy about that and this is actually the reason why i'm putting so much work into this album you know so i can actually get the label to like the greater height well Weezy, it's been a fantastic time meeting you. You know, we're waiting, we're looking forward to the album. The three singles are completely ridiculous. If you haven't seen it already, like I said, Weezy Frenzy, hashtag, <laughs> Twitter slash Weezkid. Just go check that out. It's fantastic. We've got Don't Do, Tease Me, and Holla at Your Boy. Fantastic video shot in Nigeria. Factory 78 definitely approves. We stamp that. Boy. You know, we're waiting for 2011. It has to be big, my brother. This is my year, man. I'm going to cop loads of awards, man. Y'all just watch out. <laughs> I'm taking over. Watch out. He's taking over. Factory 78, we're taking over. Yeah. See you next time. Yes, sir.